Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, what if Deku become a cyborg hero part 2. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video, and also share this video with your friends. I have created my other videos playlist, there you can watch my all videos easily, check out as well. Let's start this video. Urizuku's school was odd, even being told how different this was to his previous, he just didn't get it, he understood the work just fine, but he was never offered membership into the after-school clubs that ran for academic purposes, even if he was just shy of having Momo's grades. In his physical education class, because of the nanites, all but two students in the entire body could keep up with him simply by the nature of how his body had been enhanced. But he was never asked to play on any of the school sports teams. And the home economics, as he found out, was geared more towards the boys and girls who were going to marry off as trophy spouses, he had an aptitude for stitching, cleaning, and cooking, so he was the highest grade in that class. Yet he never got asked to join any of their so-called stay-at-home wives groups. He was an oddity, and he had figured it had to do with how little others knew about him, came from no known family, not wealthy or even moderately rich. He had no apparent connections to government bodies, and the closest thing to interesting was that his father worked overseas. Until the others found out that he just worked on an oil rig, which paid enough to send home that his mother and himself lived comfortably with her working part-time. He knew about the divorce. He had asked his mother about where his father had been some time ago to learn more of his history. He had worried he had been the cause of it, but Inko had consoled him and swore that it had nothing to do with anything he had done, nor had it been because he was quirkless. His father just liked it more out of Japan, and they had been separated for so many years, it was just an amicable departure for the both of them. Hell even the other students weren't aware he was quirkless, they simply assumed he had some metal body mutation quirk. But somehow no one really was interested in him. So on lunch he took his usual place at a table, waiting for Momo to join him. Maybe that's it, they're too intimidated by Momo to do anything. But that thought didn't really make sense, so he shoved it to the back of his mind. When she sat down he greeted her, without noticing the change, good afternoon Momo. Hello, Zuku, how is your day going, she politely responded. It's alright, same boring classes, same boring, uh, Izuku trailed off, noticing that other students in the room were staring at them. Izuku patted his cheeks, finding nothing so he whispered to Momo, hey uh, is there something on my face? Momo, not noticing the change in atmosphere, leaned dangerously close to his face, because she couldn't see anything but maybe, if she got close she could. Until the sound of someone gasping behind her drew her attention, what? I knew it, screamed at some boy with an ascot and coiffed hair. That's why you shunned my advances dearest Yao Yorozu chan The boy stomped over to the table, because this ruffian has you trapped in some ill manner. Izuku looked at Momo bewildered, mirroring the same look. What are you talking about so san Momo inquired. His eyes scoffed, of course it all makes sense now, what does he have on you? What illegal activity has he discovered going on at your company that he holds over you for this farce of a marriage? What is the? Momo started before Izuku slammed his fist into the table, punching right through the high quality wood. How, he snarled, fucking, dare you. Izuku stood up, grabbed size by his collar with his non-metallic hand, and lifted him off the ground. You think I would do something like that to Momo, threaten her, blackmail, just to make her be with me, he yelled into the boy's face. Exactly like the brute you are, so spit in his scarred face. Just like the lower class, to resort to violence, when they are confronted with their betters. Momo stood up and tried to defuse the situation, but what Izuku said next stunned her. Momo is the most amazing, most talented, most intelligent, most beautiful girl I have ever met, she saved my life, I love her. Izuku snarled, so don't you ever think I would do anything to hurt her, every moment she chooses to spend with me is a blessing. Izuku dropped the boy to the floor as the teachers came in. You tried to hit my mom because she rejected you, so here is your one and only warning, come near her again with that attitude and they'll be pulling your corpse out of the dumpster. Mr. Midoriya, said the teacher. How could you start a fight, especially in the lunchroom? Come with me to the principal's office. As the woman turned her back and Izuku made to follow, Momo screamed. Sai's apparently didn't take, being rejected by a rival well either, and used his quirk, weapon, which allowed him to pull any weapon out of his palm, this time choosing a sword which he swung wide into Izuku's body. This blade will be your death, worm. So's cackled, he knew that Izuku's left arm would be too hard to cut through, but his non-machine arm, that was just flesh, or so he thought. The blade dug into his flesh, and Izuku's blood hit the floor, but something happened. The sleeve had been cut wide enough that others could see, Izuku's arm had turned black, the same type of metal as his body, with the sword the depth of the blade in his arm, but it stopped there. Izuku growled and flexed his right arm, which snapped the blade off before he spun and delivered a punch that sent So's flying across the room. 
Everyone in the room watched in fear as Izuku yanked the remaining metal from his arm, and the cut sealed with more of the black metal, leaving a distinct line on the outside of his bicep, where the metal clashed, spider webbing into his skin. The teacher shook herself from her stupor, Izuku nurse's office, and the boy left, no one stopping Momo who chased after him. Someone checked Sozan, and then took him to the nurse's office as well. As she pulled out her phone to call the principals and inform him and her of how the situation had changed. The principals, who had a rather interesting quirk, dual body. Which split them at the age of four into two bodies, one boy and one girl, but they shared a single mind, which allowed them to learn at twice the capacity. It allowed them to act as a single unit which made administrative work incredibly simple. But today the situation was pure headache inducing, they would rather be doing anything, even being audited, would be less annoying now. The pro-hero Edshot, flanked by two officers, were standing in the spacious office, Inko and Ashi were sitting with their children on one of the large couches, while Soz and his mother were sitting on the other. So let me get this straight because I can always get it out of someone, Mr. Bai said. Mrs. Nari followed up, you, pointing her manicured nail at Izuku, started the physical altercation because, and I quote, size was bad-mouthing Momo. Then you proceeded to threaten Sozan. Izuku nodded in agreement at the way the information was presented. Then you, Mr. Bai pointed his expensive pen at Sozan. Continue to antagonize a person threatening you with physical violence. At which point Midoriya-san, again, and I quote from another student, gave like the most totally hot confession I'd ever seen in my literal life. Before Ms. Torek attempted to neutralize the situation by removing Midoriya-san. Mrs. Nari finished, before you screamed, this blade will be your death, and proceeded to attack Midoriya-san with a katana. Striking him, leaving a small pool of blood on the cafeteria floor at which point, he struck you, and sent you careening across the room. She sighed, and put her ringed hand on the desk. Does any of that sound inaccurate? No party denied what was presented. Soza's mother spoke up first, so what are you going to do to the boy who almost killed my son? Your son, Izuku only punched your kid, that little miscreant swung a sword at mine. Inko stood up infuriated, which didn't really do much to make her look taller. And your son is perfectly fine, she pointed to the green-haired boy who was sitting quietly in his seat, his arm long ago healed by itself. Well my son is sitting like this, the mother pulled her son into her, his face and nose bandaged up and swollen. Nashi stood up, there was no way of knowing if Izuku would have been fine from an attack like that. Defending her and her daughter's friend. Sir and madam, it is completely unreasonable to judge an action by its outcome, rather than the intended outcome, this boy, she waved her hand at Soz, swung that sword clearly with the intent to do considerable damage, regardless of Izuku's quirk acting in a way to protect him. Mr. and Mrs. Benari, who had split their names to not make it obvious they had married themselves, shared a look. That seems like a reasonable position to hold. Ed shot, the two said in unison at the pro hero, what seems to be your impression of the situation? The quiet pro hero looked over the situation, seems like one person was giving a warning, while the other was attacking. What I want to know is what provoked him, pointing at Soz. To confront him, pointing to Izuku. So Beansprout, the ninja addressed the quiet boy, what did you do differently today, that could cause such a disturbance? Izuku sat quietly, choosing to think over his day, all the while muttering to himself, my training isn't known to anyone outside mom, the Yaoyorozu, and their employees, unknowingly announcing that he was training in the room. We snuggled on the car ride up, he continued his thinking out loud, Momo blushing furiously at how the boy could say something like that and not notice, while both Inko and Nashi were smirking. Classes were boring as always. Making the principals frown at his lack of interest in the school's teaching. I waited for Momo at lunch like I always do, then Sozan came over, and then everything that the principals said happened, happened. Izuku looked up, no sorry I don't see me doing anything different than I normally do. Not realizing he had been speaking aloud the entire time. Momo gasped, oh god, that was it. Everyone looked at the young beauty. Edshot asked, what was it? Momo rang her hands, he called me Momo in front of everyone. That's it. The ninja hero inquired. He said your name, and a fight started. The number four hero looked at the dumbstruck boy, you picked a fight because he said her name. The hell is wrong with you? He doesn't deserve to have her, she should be mine to size granted before he passed out, a thin red strand pulled itself from his neck. Yeah not dealing with that. So I seem a little lost, and apparently nobody else is, so mind filling me in here. The hero asked the principals, and the principal explained that because of how prestigious the school is, most of the students are from wealthy, old or well-connected families, as a result many are in marriage contracts with other students or those outside the walls. So relationships form as a sort of business deal. Bedshot raising his eyebrow at the absurdity of what he was being told, had it not come from a figure of authority he would be laughing in the person's face, despite his normally stoic attitude. 
So because Midoriya Sen calls Yao Yorozu Sen by her given name, what took her off the market? That shot said with obvious confusion in his tone. Sort of, Nashi said, it more showed these two are connected in a more familiar manner than they are with others, so until the details of their relationship are known, it is seen as taboo to pursue either one. That shot tossed up his hands, okay, look I'm a hero, I don't do this type of thing, so I'm offering two options, I can arrest them both for using their quirks on each other, let the courts handle this, seeing that no one was happy about that option, are you, he said pointing to the principals. Just keep them away from each other for the rest of the school year, it's 10 months, and then they'll go off to high school, and hopefully they won't cross paths again. Because of all of this, he said, waving his hands around the room, is not something I'm equipped to deal with, and Dever would have been better suited to coming up with a solution. Since he fits into your world, but I don't, so those are the options. Well Midoriya Sen got a perfect score on the UA mock exam, so an arrest would mess up his chances of getting in, Mr. Bai said, making so smirk. Him thinking he should take the first option just to screw over the green-haired boy. However Mrs. Nari ruined any thought of that happening, but with what was said so Zen would be facing attempted murder charges, and with so many witnesses, it would take a miracle for him not to be convicted, guaranteeing it ruins his life. Mrs. Sai spoke up, my boy cannot go to prison with common criminals. We'll take the second option. The rich mother looked to her son, just ignore these two, they are not worth your time, she turned back to the other occupants of the room. If business is concluded we will take out leave. The Shosi will be back, after he receives treatment for his injuries. But no one stopped her, and her son, they departed. The officers leaving as they realized they weren't going to be arresting anyone, Edshot remained behind, so perfect score on the mock exam huh? Izuku stuttered in acknowledgement to the hero, yes sir. Hmm, strong, tough, smart, seems like he has a good head on his shoulders, Edshot sized up the boy, a little short, but hey we can stand with the giants all the same, I hope this is the last time you get into trouble, I'd like to see you at the sports festival next year. I think you'll make a great hero by then, if you keep defending pretty young girls honor like that. He reached into his pocket, and dropped a smoke bomb, have fun. Izuku and Momo were scared of the teasing they got from a pro, and they both knew it would only get worse once the two of them got home. But they had classes to get to, so Izuku grabbed Momo's hand, and they ran out of the principal's office together. Both parents are smiling devilishly at how the game has been progressing. For Izuku the following months were stressful. Every single morning was testing his limits, when Dr. Hijimshikina heard that his body would react to external threats on instinct, the training shifted from mostly Izuku stressing his body in new ways, to actual combat. As a result, Izuku could for a fraction of a second boost his non-metallic parts to the same strength and durability as his full metal parts. But anything longer than that they would return under his skin, and he almost lost an arm when a refrigerator was launched at him, and he caught it with his flesh. After hearing that Inko made a point to sit in with Dr. Hijimshikina for Izuku's training, and she expressly forbade him from live fire tests on her son, but access to high-quality equipment meant Izuku was getting faster and stronger at an impressive rate. School however was an entirely different beast, size would do nothing but give him the evil eye, but the other students in his classes were more talkative with him. Um, Hashina-san, why is everyone suddenly wanting to be my friend? Is it because I punched So-san? Izuku asked his baking partner, who was really just on her phone. The home ex students didn't care about trying in the class, they would all just hire chefs and staff for their homes instead of doing it themselves, so Izuku really was the only one trying in the class. The SSH, no way, like, we don't care that you punch that stuck-up loser. Hashina said as she flipped her hair. But like you and Yao Yorozu chan now we know what you are, so it's fine to talk to you. Izuku paused in his stirring, I'm sorry what? The teen rolled her eyes at the green-haired cyborg, ugh, it's like, we knew you two were something, but no one was, gonna step in that, totes not cool at all. But now that everyone knows you two are dating it's like, you know safe to be seen talking to you. She explained as her fingers flew across the screen of the phone. Izuku had never actually seen her quirk, but he suspected it was some sort of super speed that was only in her hands at the way she typed. So, I'm one of the cool kids now. Izuku stammered, causing Hashina to laugh. Sorry, you, cool, no way short stuff, she giggled. But you're one of us now, a trophy spouse. So, we can be like sharing stories when our husbands and wives are at work and junk. Uh, that sounds nice, Izuku shrugged. Might be hard with being a pro hero, and all, but, I guess I could try to find time to hang out. Bashina stopped looking at her phone, like what do you mean, being a pro hero? Uh, well I'm applying to go to the UA for high school, Izuku said. No way, she's gonna let you have a hobby outside the home. Hashina shouted, the teacher shushing them, but going right back to her novel, this class being one that no one really had to participate in. 
Izuku finding himself surrounded by people suddenly became nervous. I don't exactly know what you mean, but I always wanted to be a hero, so it won't be a hobby if I make it. The lanky boy with purple skin walked over, wow, my intention already told me I wasn't going to be doing any type of job or stuff, she just wants me to stay thin and just do whatever while she runs the companies. Huh, I don't get that. Momo and I are just dating. Izuku started cleaning up his area. I mean she's going to the UA as well. Now it makes sense, another girl said. She's letting you go to keep her toy nearby. Izuku watched as other students nodded, he himself was completely lost, so just went with it, yeah something like that. Which itself wasn't too off, she was going to keep an eye on the nanomachines, which were kind of like a toy, a hundred billion yen toy. Izuku slumped into his seat with Momo across from him, tough day, she asked. Confusing, I don't think the other students get that we're dating, Izuku said. Momo queried her eyebrow. We are. I don't remember you asking me out recently, she teased. Izuku blushed, oh, well um, Momo, would you want to maybe go see a movie Friday? You mean sit in the theater and watch something, she asked. Izuku shook his head, no like, leave the mansion and go into the city, that type of date. Momo hummed loudly, well, I guess, but I have a boyfriend. This information seemingly crashes Izuku's brain. RR really, I I didn't um no no, he stammered, feeling incredibly stupid. Yeah, he has green hair, really cute freckles, kind of short, she started describing Izuku, but his own brain did not register it was him. Also he totally confessed his love to me in the cafeteria, then he got stabbed, it was terrifying, in a romantic sort of way. Izuku sunk into himself. Oh well, I hope he makes you happy, he said glumly. Momo flicked his nose, dork, I'm talking about you, she giggled as she leaned over and kissed the tip of his nose. Izuku's brain was rebooting at this, really, he whispered. Duh, of course, who else would I be talking about? Well well, you'll have to take it up with my, um girlfriend, him trying the same tactics as she did, so in fairness, Momo decided to play along. Oh, well tell me about this mystery girl, I want to make sure she's good enough for you. She giggled into her hand. She is tall and has the longest black hair. She's super smart and, Izuku gulped, has the hottest body I've ever seen. Blushing at saying something so forward, she um, also makes me want to be stronger, better, be a hero. He pushed his food around with his fork. Momo was prepared to act all sad, but hearing what he was saying about her only made her blush, Zuku that's. Yeah, it's Minanani-chan, Izuku pointed at another girl across the hall, who looked nothing like what he described. Momo looked at him in shock before throwing some of her food at him. Oh you brat, she fumed. Izuku took the chance to laugh, and he pecked her on the nose, yeah, but I'm your brat. So, about that movie. We are definitely seeing horror for that little stunt you pulled Mr., she stole some of his lunch to replace her own. Okay Izuku today, we're testing your tactics, Dr. Hijimshikina's voice came from an earpiece. For this simulation, terrorists have taken a hostage, and it is up to you to rescue them. The enemies are outfitted with real firearms, so this will test your reflexes and how good the nanomachines can react in defending you. Mom's not here, Izuku realized. Inko would never let the insane doctor get away with this. Who do you think is the hostage? The mad doctor's cackle came over the radio. What, you're using real guns, near my mother? Izuku screamed. Yeah so don't screw this up, as the device in his ear died. Izuku paced around swearing fucking, mother shitting dickhole, going to murder that fucking crazy son of a bitch, breathing hard he paused. Okay Izuku, your mom is being held hostage by an actual madman, the turrets are using real bullets, I can block and defend against them, but sustained fire will tear me to shreds. Izuku muttered to himself, so I have to avoid being seen, get in, release the hostage, and get her somewhere safe. And go, the doctor's voice shouted in his ear, scaring the boy. Wait where's the countdown? Izuku shouted. The doctor's mad laugh ringing in his ear, there is no countdown in life, get a move on, unless you don't want to save mommy dearest. Hucking asshole, Izuku slammed his earpiece on the ground. He flipped his eye to x-ray vision and started looking through the building, seeing the turrets placed to minimize blind spots and have maximum coverage. Then there was one room with some lead lining, found you mom. Izuku came in from the second floor window, not wasting time with the ground floor. Using his x-ray vision found a wall with wiring, are you afraid of the dark, as he punched his metal arm in the wall and yanked out the wires, plunging the building into darkness. Which allowed him to switch to night vision. The first few turrets on the floor didn't have anything beyond standard cameras, which meant clearing them out was simple. Oh no, looks like the terrorists got spooked and turned on their night vision, the doctor pointed out from a speaker in the corner. You'll have to do better than that, my little cyborg. Izuku growled, I'll show you better. As he grabbed a few of the destroyed turrets and pieced them together, not topping my robotics class for no reason. In a few minutes he had a functional firearm of his own. 
creeping through the third floor, just one below where he needed to get. It wasn't terribly hard to take out the remaining turrets on this floor, as he could see through the walls to shoot out the gun placements. Oh man, I guess losing all his minions made the boss angry, he wants to fight. Head on up to finish this, little boy. Izuku stomped over to a set of stairs, alright where is it, he yelled. Before he rolled forward to avoid sharp metal claws. Izuku squared up to his opponent. A large quadrupedal beast, with a manipulator tail. Like I made it myself, Dr. Hijimshikina cheered. It's my pride and joy, now kill it Izuku, kill it, and save your mother from my, I mean it's, evil clutches, he snickered. Finding the weakness of this new enemy was intense, he ducked and dodged a flurry of sharp claws and metal teeth. This isn't nearly as advanced as the nanomachines that I had been developing, but with a proper design of robotics, I could make hundreds of these and use them for whatever. The Mad Doctor monologues. After a few minutes Izuku had managed to pin the machine and shoved his metal hand deep in the beast's neck. Suddenly feeling a surge, the robot twitched and fell to the ground, and weighing in at 65 kilos, the scrappy little green bean, Izuku Midoriya, has defeated the terrible robot. Come get your prize. Laughed Dr. Hijimshikina. Izuku walked over to a panel that had a note taped to it, the passcode is Momo-chan's measurements. And as a result Izuku with a scarlet face entered the room. Where he saw the soon-to-be pummeling doctor and his mother, sitting at a candle-lit table having dinner. What in the fucking hell? Izuku yelled as he stormed over to the two adults. Simple my dear boy, the doctor started before a fist to the cheek cut him off. Izuku, that was just plain rude, Inko chastised her son. Rude, rude, Izuku furiously shouted, he said you were a hostage. And I was, Inko told him. I was his hostage for dinner until you came to get me, the duck is quite nice, here try some. As she raised a fork laden with food to her son. Izuku's anger made it impossible for him to form words, so he stomped out of the room instead, sputtering half-formed sentences and thoughts. The doctor picked up his chair and sat back down on it. C told you, proper motivation, and not a scratch on him. Which means you owe me a date. He grinned at the woman. Damn it, Inko sighed, it was hard to want her son to get hurt just to prove the madman wrong, but his training was paying off in spades. Fine, we go to a movie, then dinner, finishing with a stroll in the park. If it's good you get a kiss and a thank you. Go karting, dance club, and when it's great, I get a beach, and we go out to a bar next week, the doctor countered. Then coach ordered, dancing, at a respectable restaurant, we hit the arcade, and if it's amazing, maybe a handyman in the park, final offer, take it or leave it. Deal, now I just need to make a few phone calls, the madman clacked his heels as he walked out. Yeah, no the kid's going to tear those hunk of junk power loader is going to have the kids test against. The SH of course I'm serious, the LQ84I was nothing to him, and that thing was supposed to be able to take out any pro, not in the top 30. He said into the phone, as he inspected the robot. As the doctor watched a fragment of black and metal fluidly move into the machine, Nope was completely destroyed. Let's scrap the prototype for now, and focus on what this kid can do. He smirked as the machine's glassy red eye lit up again, Dr. Hijimshikina closed his flip phone, and looked into the camera. Well, 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 let's see what you can do now. And finally, after months of grueling training, where Izuku was being constantly pushed to new limits, to greater heights, and most importantly, more embarrassing situations. It was finally here, the UA entrance exam. Now Izuku, make sure you have a filling breakfast, but no fats or grease, don't want an upset stomach, Nashi instructed him as one of the maids brought out some grapefruit and oatmeal. Yes, Mrs. Yaoi Oroao Izuku rubbed his head where she struck him. Waving her newspaper at the boy, what have I told you to call me? Sorry Mama Nashi, Izuku mumbled. Smiling at the green-haired child, good, now we'll have Shinji drop you off at the gate, and you just call, and he'll come right up to get you, as she sat down with her husband to eat her own breakfast. And what if Izuku started to ask before being cut off? No, none of that. I've seen the reports Dr. Hijimshikina has sent us. In terms of combat capabilities, you are well above most of the average pro heroes, Ringo said as he sipped his morning tea, and that you are a bright young lad. I have no concern as to the outcome of the written portion of the exam. But what, Izuku nervously tried to ask. Sweetie, it's not going to happen, Inko said as she entered the room. You have put your heart and soul into being a hero, we all believe in you. Momo walked into the dining hall yawning, yeah, so just go and get this over with and we can celebrate later tonight. That sounds fun Momo, Izuku admitted. Nashi clapped her hands, good I'll make sure the condoms are well stocked in both of your bedrooms. Momo's face turned bright red at the offer, mom. We aren't doing that yet. Yet she says, it's always a yet. Inko lamented, do our children ever think about our needs? We could have grandbabies now, if they only got to it, faking a whale. Where did we go so wrong? 
Muam, stop it you're being weird, and all the maids are laughing at us, Izuku whined as he looked around the room, and noticed the staff weren't even trying to hide their amusement anymore. Ringo looked over the edge of his morning paper, and noticed Izuku squirm in his seat. Hmm, maybe. You get first place today, and I'll consider that my baby girl should spend some alone time with her boyfriend, I'll even unlock the pay-per-view channels, the good stuff this time. Not that softcore stuff you two were watching. Bad, no, I keep telling you it was mom who turned that on, Momo chastised her father as she was also served a hearty breakfast. Snorting to himself, ha, I know your mother's taste, she wouldn't even bother to remember those channels with what she likes to see. Both children blushing, and trying not to make eye contact as the parents become more open with them about their kinks. Though speaking of taste, how goes things with the mad doctor? Nashi asked her friend. Inko shrugged while she buttered a muffin. He's fun for a while, but I don't think he can really keep up with me. Sipping her tea, Nashi nodded, shame, so hard to find a good man these days. Momo is so lucky to have found Izuku, now if we can just find a nice stud for you Inko, then before Izuku slammed his head into the table. Please, for the love of something, do not talk about my mother's sex life in front of me, Izuku begged. Inko nudged her son, well, find mommy a nice strapping man, and then I can. Yes, fine, I will, I'll make sure that at some point I get you laid. Izuku shouted quickly as he scarfed down his breakfast and left the room to prepare for the exam. Thinking to himself as he went, what the fuck is my life even at this point? Were we too hard on him? Ringo asked the maid who refilled his cup. Shaking her head, no sir, you, and the misuses were quite humorous, I do think however that since your daughter is still here, and pretending to not hear any of this means you may need to put in a bit more effort next time, but that is just my opinion. Ringo looked at his daughter's red face as she slightly shook in her seat in anticipation for whatever scheme the adults came up with, and I think that is a mighty correct opinion, I will definitely take it under advisement. Momo, staying quiet as she quickly ate her large breakfast, thought to herself, it's just me, and him, everyone else has been corrupted. Our parents have gone insane, and are dragging the staff down with them. I can't wait for the UA to start up much longer. As Izuku came down the stairs and into the garage with his training suit on, Dr. Hijimshikina was waiting for him in the limo. I have few words to say to you sir, Izuku growled, still irritated at how the scientist had been getting results from him. Good, use that anger, channel it, destroy those hunks of scrap UA calls robots, the light reflecting off the man glasses, it is a travesty what Higari teaches in his class. So you already know what the exam is going to be about. Izuku said as the driver prepared the limousine, isn't that an unfair advantage? Laughing to himself, Dr. Hijimshikina answered, hardly, they haven't changed the entrance exam in something like 20 years, it's a disgrace if you ask me. It's why I declined to go to that institute. Izuku stumbled as he opened the car door, you, were going to go to the UA? He asked incredulously. The SSH, no, they begged me to go, after all how many 15-year-olds were capable of creating a miniature cold fusion reactor, of course I put it inside my old Gundam model kit and programmed it to fight. The doctor leaned against the jet black vehicle and sighed, oh the good old days of underground robot fighting tournaments. Noticing that Izuku was staring at him like he had become sane, Dr. Hijimshikina pushed him into the car. Just remember, be yourself, smash some shit, and your mom has the softest hands I have ever felt. Izuku groaned as he realized the doctor gave him more information than he had ever wanted to know about his mother. But he couldn't respond as the door was slammed shut and the limo drove away towards the city. Letting out an exasperated breath he slumped into the plush seat and quietly watched the cityscape roll by. Pulling up to the gates of UA a half an hour later however, that was breathtaking. Izuku was amazed at the size of the facility, it was almost as big as the Yaoyorozu compound. Wow, now there's a sight, Izuku gazed in wonder at the scenery. Boy, get the fuck out of my way loser, as a boy with ash blonde hair shoved past him. Izuku stumbled slightly as he caught himself, man what a jerk, watching as the other boy stomped his way into the building. But why does he seem familiar? Shrugging at the idea and filing it away as just another one of those people you swear you know, he took his first step across the threshold and into his new future. Hello little listeners, I am present Mick, your host of today's exam, the hero announced as he entered the room. Can I get a YHHH? The only response was silence, ooh, I am so excited too, now since you all finished the written portion, so much faster than others. As he gazed around the room at the occupants. We'll now move on to what you've all been waiting for. As Izuku listened to the proctor explain the rules, he began strategizing how he would go about it, having the slight advantage of knowing that it was robots he would be tested against, which led him to relax. He had been doing marvelously in Aichi's robotics course, so he was already thinking of ways to use that to his advantage. When he heard some other contestants speak to the proctor he glanced up and saw that tall, blue-haired boy. But quickly he saw the boy from earlier just staring at him. 
Bezuku couldn't place the face though, it was someone he definitely knew, but the way that person was looking at him, a mixture of anger, sorrow, and disgust. He wasn't sure what to make of it, so he just turned around, but suddenly, and you with the green hair, you've been muttering throughout the explanation, if you are not going to take this seriously, you have no business being here. Bezuku shrugged and just faced the front. Wow, a little tense there listener, but you are correct the fourth obstacle doesn't really count. So Izuku sat and drowned out what the pro hero was saying with his own thoughts. As the participants proceed to get bussed over to our designated testing zones, Izuku takes stock of everyone who was on his vehicle, a girl with pink skin, the tall boy from earlier, and a tired looking boy with purple hair. Beyond that no one had any noticeable traits about them, so Izuku sighed and leaned back into his seat, that blonde boy from earlier wasn't there, and something about him was still tugging at the back of Izuku's mind. When the bus pulled up to the gate, present Mick, who had been the driver, stepped onto a scaffolding. Alright, the test is about to begin, his loud voice carrying far over the crowd. Make sure you get nice and ready. As Izuku began his stretches to limber up and prevent stiff joints, he began sizing up the crowd. Most of the people weren't doing anything but standing around, some had weapons or other gear, but only a few seemed to be doing anything to warm up before the exam started. Izuku raised his head to watch as the gate opened, his muscles tensing at the excitement and starting, present Mick shouted to the crowd. Izuku, having training with Dr. Hijimshikina, took off at a sprint into the cityscape. His enhanced speed put a sizable distance between himself and the other competitors who were still standing around. Eh, uh, Dumbis just ran in, someone said out loud. Present Mick turned to look at the potential student standing around, well what are you waiting for, get a move on listeners. What? Where's the countdown? Another person asked. Laughing loudly, there's no countdown in real life, no starting bell, when it's go time, it's time to go, present Mick's voice carried far. The sound of stampeding students caught up to Izuku's ears, but as he had a not insignificant lead, he had already taken out over a dozen robots. These are so much weaker than the prototype I fought, Izuku said aloud. Dr. Hijimshikina was right, this is easy. Even throwing punches with his non-metallic arm, the nanomachines formed quickly just before impact and allowed him to fight with both his arms and his legs. Doing so brought back a memory of his training with the madman. Are you insane, how am I supposed to fight back? Izuku yelled as he dodged a saw blade. That's for you to figure out genius, came the doctor as he sipped his iced tea, relaxing in a lawn chair, this time making corrections in a TV guide with a crayon. Izuku ducked and weaved outside the reach of the whirling blades. The straight jacket he woke up in, last time he accepted snacks from Dr. Hijimshikina, and this time he meant it, prevented him from punching the machine. You know if I could fight back, I could do a much better job of destroying this thing, he yelled over to his trainer. And if an octopus had six tentacles it would be called a sextopus, the man countered as he added mustaches and beards to the pictures of the actors in the guide. Bezuku groaned as he fell to the ground to avoid being decapitated. What does that even mean? The doctor losing his patience threw the paper book at his student, it means, fuck this bitch up, I got tickets to a primary school play to go to. Izuku stared at the man like the lunatic he is, why are you going to an elementary school play? Well, where else am I supposed to study children in the wild? I've been banned from every zoo, water park, and McDonald's in Japan, and Guatemala. So hurry up, the doctor replaced his reading glasses with dark sunglasses and fell asleep in the chair in seconds. Izuku, getting fed up, rolled on the ground as the machine dived for him. He kicked off the robot and it was pushed far away from him, right, I can kick. Turning to the doctor, is that what you were trying to teach me, to not only fight with my fists? Instead of responding, the maid who was on duty to refill his glass, pulled out a tape recorder, and the doctor's voice began to play. Good job moron, it only took you until I fell asleep to realize you didn't have to punch everything. Well why didn't you just say so earlier, Izuku snarled as he switched his style to kicking and kneeing the robot. The same maid pulled out a second tape recorder, and the doctor's voice played a second time, special report, local boy learns he has limbs other than his arms. More at 11. Looking at the maid as he crushed the machine underneath his heel, do you think he plans a lot of this or just has so much random crap it looks like he plans it? The maid shrugged and walked away, her duty to the doctor this morning done. Pulling himself from his thoughts, Izuku kicked one robot into another. I hate the man, but damn it, his training works. He wiped the sweat from his brow, despite his enhancements, it's still tiring to run around for 10 minutes straight, punching and kicking his way through a bunch of robots. Well I got 46 points from all the robots I destroyed. Looking around he saw as other students were calling out their scores. Unbeknownst to the participants, a group of people were sitting in a dark room lit only by the light from monitors as they watched the potential students they may be admitting. Okay, but why are all the lights off? Midnight whined. 
That's on account of us needing to be more dramatic, Snipe answered. Bazaar was swiveled in his chair, wait dramatic for who, that would only work if someone was watching us. All Might loudly responded, nonsense, we can be dramatic for ourselves. Midnight huffed and sat back in her chair, well I still think it's a bit weird to be watching them all like this. Nedzu chuckled in his plush chair, do you want to know what I think? He looked around the room as he flipped up the glass case on a big red button. I think it's time for giant robots. Laughing maniacally the principal bounced in his seat, tea spilling from his cup. Bazuku was prepared to give it a rest, he didn't need to overexert himself. He was certain that he would pass, with his near-perfect score in the written, and getting into the high 40s for destroying robots. Until the earth began to rumble beneath his feet, what the? Turning to the source he noticed dozens of competitors running past him, including the boy from earlier. Because a robot larger than the apartment complex he lived in crashed down the street, taking out buildings with its eyes alone. Shrugging to himself he accepted that there wasn't much left to do for this exam, other than to leave, and maybe pick up a few extra points on his way out, when he heard a soft mewling. Please, someone help, a soft voice from behind him. Swiveling, and adjusting his vision to thermal, he looked through the dust kicked up by the destroyed building. A girl was lying on the ground, pinned by a large slab of concrete. Anyone, she coughed in some of the air, please, help me. The girl looked up at the sound of the gigantic machine as it moved down the street towards her. Yuraka screamed as the giant robotic hand lowered itself towards her, seemingly intent on crushing her. Suddenly she felt the pressure of the debris lift off of her body. Huh, looking at a boy who was picking up the rubble with ease. Your ankle is broken, Izuku said his eye lit up as he used the x-ray function to see her bones. You won't be able to walk like that. He stared down at the girl. Yuraka let out a shriek as the robot hand kept moving towards them. Look out, she cried out to the boy. Izuku hefted the slab of concrete to the side and turned to face the machine, bracing himself to catch. When the Zero Pointer's fist reached Izuku's, the nanomachines activated and his fingers dug into the metal. Spinning on his heel Izuku swung the machine and with a loud shout hurled it across the arena. The large machine landed on a building which collapsed under the combined force of the impact and its weight. As at that size thousands of tons of metal came down at once, creating a resounding impact that could be heard across the city. Yuraka gazed at her savior, a whisper of amazement gracing her lips, wow. But before she could thank the boy, President Mick announced that the contest was over. In the control room the proctors were stunned, all might, midnight turned to the gaunt man, could you have done that? Shrugging to himself the number one hero looked around the room, probably, but to think someone that young also contains such strength, where's the boy's file? Azawa pushed a few buttons on the keyboard in front of him, Izuku Midoriya, quirk, the teacher's pause made everyone look at him in anticipation. Well Kansas growled, what's his quirk? He's quirkless, as always said. Pardon my vernacular, but that's a bigger load of bullshit than a dairy farm, Snipe said. Azawa pushed against a desk to allow others to come up to it. See for yourself, either no physician or school administration documented his quirk, or this kid is up to something. As the other teachers each looked at the file on the green-haired boy. Nedzu sat in his chair and chuckled. So that's your game, the varmint in a suit faced his employees, so how do all of you feel about this year's crop of potential students? Outstanding, All Might grinned. Down in the city, Izuku was carrying Yuraka towards the exit gate. Um, thank you, the rosy-cheeked girl quietly said, that was amazing. Izuku shrugged as he carried her, went a lot better than the last time I tried to save a cute girl. Yuraka blushed furiously in his arms, cutie thinks I'm cute, she muttered. The small elderly woman approached as she handed out candy to people, oh, and what's the injury here? Izuku looked at the nurse, fractures to the calcaneus and talus. Oh that's a very precise assumption, recovery girl laughed, sometimes a student tries to play doctor. Not an assumption when I can see the bones, Izuku laid the girl on the ground. X-ray vision. Pointing to his mechanical eye. Recovery girl looked at the intricate machinery. Well that is impressive. Do you have any injuries to yourself? She asked after kissing Yuraka, who was able to stand on shaky legs. Nothing that wasn't already healed, Izuku waved to Yuraka. Good luck broken foot girl. As he pulled out his cell phone and called for a pickup. When Izuku got back he was pulled into a hug by Momo and was made to regale the Yaoyorozu and his mother about his time in the test. Later during the last scheduled test and review by the scientists to assess his physicality before heading off to UA. As no one doubted his acceptance into the prestigious academy, Dr. Hijimshikina asked for his impression of the various machines they were tested against, which only disappointed the madman at how tame Izuku thought it was. Ah, based on that, you could have passed without the nanomachines if that's how weak they were. So many weak points to exploit, too easy to bring equipment that would trivialize the contest, and it only shows how good you are at destroying scrap. 
The doctor ranted as he wandered around the laboratory as Izuku continued his set of sit-ups. But tell me more about when you threw the giant robot, he came over and began poking Izuku's stomach with a dropper to catch some of his sweat. Because based on the last numbers I have, you shouldn't have been able to throw something at that weight yet. Izuku paused on the up in his workout, yet. You mean the nanomachines will get me to that level all the time? Laughing as he dropped the boy's sweat onto a slide to examine it under a microscope, of course, but right now your body is either too much flesh or not enough machine, he offered. Izuku sighed and remembered what my mother told you. As the two of them said the words at the same time. Training is one thing, but if you try to vivisect my son, that scalpel will find a new home somewhere very soft. Yes, I do remember the warning that the luxurious woman gave, the doctor waved off the boy as he analyzed the liquid. Seems like you are able to overclock the nanites if you are under extreme duress. Izuku returned to his sit-ups, well I wasn't really afraid or anything, but he thought about the day's events. Yud. I think I just really wanted to save the girl, Izuku concluded. Tuckling to himself, the doctor incinerated the boy's sweat. Yes, you seem to be making a habit of that aren't you? But sorry, you didn't get a cool upgrade this time. Well I didn't get completely fucked up like last time though, did I, Izuku relented. That is also true, maybe later on in the year, there's still time. Dr. Hijim Shikino offered his encouragement. Oh haha, I'm sure I'm going to go out of my way to get torn limb from limb this year, would make you really happy wouldn't it, Izuku stuck his tongue out at the man as he got up and went to grab a towel to wipe himself down, finding none, or his shirt. Already understanding what was going to happen next, doctor, what day is it? Why is it embarrassing Izuku before he starts at a new school, and we don't see him as often these days? The man leaned on his desk, smirking. All the maids are right outside aren't they? Izuku slumped his shoulders. Be yep, and their daughters, and female friends, if they have any, plus a few girls from your school, as he listed off the people he had somehow convinced to come see a sweaty muscular teenager exercise. Also a nun, don't ask the lengths I had to go to find a convent in Japan. It was not easy. Looking at the mirror in the room, that's also one way isn't it? Nodding, MHM, yeah, they've been watching you work out for the last half hour, at least. Resigning himself to his fate, anything else you want to add? Dr. Hijim Shikina began tapping his finger under his chin, no, well, hmm, I think, oh yeah. This, as he ripped Izuku's workout pants off, leaving him in only his boxers. I replaced them with easy to disguise tearaway pants, of my own design. Izuku could almost hear the squealing on the other side of the glass. You know, one day, I'm going to get you back for all of this. Shame you can't do it now, what with everything I've done to you allowed under the contract with the Yaoyorozu we both signed. As the man pushed Izuku towards the door, so you might want to hurry up on that revenge, before I can snag myself some diplomatic immunity. I'll probably need that in the coming months or years. Placing his hand on the boy's shoulder, now it's 100 yards across the lawn to the manor, as a parting gift I will tell you that all the outside doors and windows are shut and locked, except for the one on the east side, fourth floor. Dirt down. Best I'm going to get out of you isn't it? Izuku raised an eyebrow at the man. Stretching his arms above his head, yeah pretty much, the doctor pulled open the door shoving the boy out of the gym and into the flashing lights of cameras and squealing hormonal mass of women. Izuku hauled his body as quickly as he could across the lawn, a run that when he got the machines would have taken him over 8 seconds to cross. After all the training, he was able to cut it down to just under 3. As he slid along the grass, he scanned the side of the mansion to see if the doctor was serious about which window. However, he failed to recognize where he was at as the jump cleanly put him into a frilly, princess-style bedroom. Oh god damn it, Izuku gasped out as he recognized where he was. Who's there? Momo shouted as she stormed out of the bathroom in only a towel, her wet hair falling down her back and shoulders. Izuku. What are, where are your clothes? I'm going to kill him, Izuku muttered, not taking his eyes off of his girlfriend. I swear, I'll do it. They'll never find his body. Momo looked at her now opened window and put two and two together. Let me guess, all the other doors are locked and someone said this was the only way in, Izuku only nodded in response. We need to get out of this house. She turned and walked back into the bathroom, dropping the towel as she closed the door to allow her boyfriend a complete view of her backside. That's for saving that girl in the entrance exam. And that's why we, Izuku and myself, should move into an apartment. Momo concluded her presentation to their parents, the maids clapped, just as they were instructed to. I don't know, Nashi pondered. What do you think about Inko? I'm just not sure, they're so young, now Ms. Midori responded. They give good reasons for why they should move out, but I would feel better if we could go and see those locations for ourselves. The other mother nodded, I agreed. It won't take long to do, so we can organize a day to check them out. 
turning to look at the two nervous teenagers, okay kids, we're interested but not sold. Both teens in their excitement at beating their parents missed a nefarious gleam in the eyes of the more experienced women. Fucking how, Momo groaned as she and Izuku stood in the one-bedroom apartment. Izuku, weak at the knees, slumped to the floor. I don't know, everything was going to plan, we did so well at all the other locations, emphasized how much we liked stuff we didn't, so they wouldn't either, Izuku muttered. We got them to cross off two of the decoys, this only left here, and the last place, the green-haired child moaned as the movers brought the king-sized bed into the room. Their room. We gave them reasons to hate this place, but what went wrong, Momo asked as she flopped onto the bed, the one that they would be sharing. One moment we're talking about drapes and lighting, which I know nothing about, then Izuku trailed off, his analytical brain slowly piecing together the puzzle. Then they gave other reasons, emotional ones why they hated this place. Momo sat up wide-eyed. You're right, they said it was too small, too far away, that we would be nothing but trouble, and they would have to worry about us. Then they offered the last place, but with maids and people to watch us, like children, Izuku added. We, we, fell for it. Momo stuffed her face in a pillow and screamed, they made us feel like children, and so we reacted like teenagers, and... Before she thrashed on the bed a little. Ah stupid teenage hormones, they played us like a fiddle, Izuku groaned, and now we're here. In a small, one-bedroom apartment, near a not-so-nice neighborhood, all because we fought their battle for them. One of the handymen slowly walked by, his hefty girth and green staff shirt swayed. Well maybe you dude should be happy about what you got, I mean it sounds like the plan was to get away from the parents, which you did, but they got you back in their own way. Izuku and Momo glared at the man as he slowly walked out of the now furnished room. I don't like when other people are right, Momo grumbled. Yeah, but he is right, we needed to get out of that madhouse, and the only thing is this place is a bit more, Izuku poked his fingers together nervously, more intimately than we might have wanted. Momo chuckled, oh Izuku, do you want to be intimate with little Olami? She from her position behind him could tell her boyfriend was blushing, not that she wasn't, but at least he couldn't see her. Um, well, yeah yeah, Izuku quietly said. But um, not if you're not ready yet. He turned to look at her, and saw she was as red as he was. Are you ready? Momo bit her lip, she had thoughts about Izuku frequently, even pleasured herself to the thought of them being together, but she didn't think she was ready to go all the way with him. They had been on dates and once even showered together, but to give herself to him completely, and he to her. Um, not uh, not yet. Izuku looked a little disappointed for a brief moment, as she too felt. That's okay I can wait, no not that I'm waiting or anything. I mean I am waiting, not that it's bad to wait. We can do other stuff, not like that but you and me, and, the green haired boy spazzed. Momo looked at her panicking boyfriend and began laughing, Izuku I get it. It's important and kind of scary, but when we're ready it will be special. Don't freak out or anything. Breathing heavily, Izuku climbed onto the bed and laid down next to her. I know, I'm just. Izuku teased. Izuku grabbed a plush pillow and bopped her with it. Hey, don't turn my name into a verb. It's an adjective, Momo corrected him. Yeah well, you're being Izuku about this apartment. He retorted, trying his best to hold back a laugh. Momo held back a snort before the two of them fell into hysterics. For a few minutes laughter filled the apartment before a knock on the doorframe brought their focus back. Hey it's me the landlord, said their landlord, a short and rainbow-colored fishman, Izuku asked about his quirk, but it wasn't that special, seemed he was one of the rare animals to develop a quirk. Which while fascinating to the quirk Ataku, was just sort of a generic human quirk that anthropomorphized him, unlike the infamous UA principal who was also a genius. We got an important letter at the front office, and well far be it from me to say no to that guy, the landlord said as he held up an envelope that was stamped with the official UA seal. But if the number one is going to personally deliver your results, then what can I say, you must be a pretty special kid. As the landlord passed the letter over to Izuku. Wow, All Might himself delivered this, Momo whispered to Izuku who was just staring at it. Tapping him a few times, hey you better not be reading it with your eye before me, that would be rude. Izuku snapped out of his thoughts, sorry, just got caught up in a memory. Momo pulled her boyfriend tightly to her. Izuku sometimes regained some memories of his life before the amnesia, they were typically without the emotional impact at the time, but when he began remembering all the bullying he faced, it was frightening to him. It was three months into the Midoriya's stay at the Yaoyorozu complex, they had taken the time to go swimming, for a few reasons, one to see how well the Nanomachines held up in aquatic conditions, another to see if they needed to reteach Izuku how to swim, and the other was just to relax. Izuku did have difficulty swimming as the density of the nanomachines messed with how he swam, he would sink very quickly if he didn't stay moving, and when he did move it was awkward. Like watching someone try to swim in jeans and a t-shirt. 
All in all, it was going fairly well until Izuku sank below the water and suddenly he began thrashing around. Alerting everyone around the pool that something had gone wrong. When Izuku finally reached his head above the water he was screaming in terror and begging for mercy. Momo had to create a net to drag him to shallower water so he could stand. She quickly climbed in and offered him comfort as he begged someone named Yashiki to let him breathe. Later after some secretive investigating it turned out an old classmate of Izuku's had decided to use his quirk to keep dunking Izuku underwater by a river, holding him down longer and longer each time. While nothing could legally be done about it, the Yaoyorizas urge Dr. Hijimshikina to create a database that they can use to keep an eye on the children who bullied Izuku growing up. Because unless something happened, those kids were already on the track to become villains. In their now quiet apartment Izuku shook his head. No this wasn't a bad one, I just now remember that All Might was my favorite. Heh, it's kind of funny, I get something hand delivered by the guy and past me would probably be freaking out, but now it's just kind of nifty I guess. He stood up and took Momo's hand as they walked out of the apartment and over to the couch. The couple sat back down and Izuku tore open the envelope. A small metal disc, no larger than a coaster dropped onto the coffee table. A beam of light flickered for a moment. Then a mighty voice rang out, testing one, two. Before All Might's giant head filled the screen, am I on screen? What do you mean, I'm too close? A bit of shuffling, and the titanic hero moved back in his pinstripe yellow suit, there is that better. Good, alright let's begin. The large hero motioned towards a monitor. Let's see your score, with 46 villain points and a whopping 50 hero, you ended the exam with a score of 96. The second highest on record. Izuku and Momo cheered, even though they knew Izuku would pass, they didn't know he would do that well. Coughing into his hand the hero continued, however, because you do not have a quirk on record, we will be forced to reject your application for the hero course. What? Momo shrieked. That, that's discrimination. They can't do that. She shot up out of her seat and started tearing around the room. Where's my phone? I'll call mom and dad and they'll get lawyers, judges, and the press. Oh you loan you a by the end of the day. Izuku quietly slipped her phone, which was on the coffee table, into his pocket before standing up. Momo, calm down, it's okay. I mean, it's not, it sucks, but, Izuku paused as he tried to think about what he was even trying to say. This is bullshit, I scored the second highest in the school's history, and I'm being rejected because I don't have a quirk. I did better than almost everyone else taking the stupid test. All Might's voice carried through the apartment, now I'm sure that you're fuming a little. Momo scoffed at the notion that a righteous crusade was little. But we are offering a solution for you to enter into our school's hero course. Because we've never actually had a quirkless applicant score well enough to be accepted, the principal is offering a compromise. Come to the UA at 5 p.m. today. Momo and Izuku looked at the clock on the wall, which was in about two hours. It will be a test. The pro hero flexed his pointer and middle fingers twice, making air quotes, and should you pass then you will be allowed to join the others in Japan's premier heroics academy. The choice is yours. His voice faded as the recording ended. Momo swiftly grabbed the projector and was prepared to hurl it into the wall when Izuku stopped her. Babe, here's your phone, let me keep this, in case we need it. Why would we need it, Momo frustratedly said. Because as you said, we have all might, admitting that I am an excellent candidate, yet because I am quirkless, Izuku made his own air quotes. That I can't join their heroics course. Momo agreed. We have evidence they are discriminating against you, even if All Might isn't a faculty member, he is representing them in some capacity by being a part of the application process. So what's the plan? Izuku turned the machine over in his hand, jerking his head back suddenly as thin wires shot from behind his eye. Izuku shrieked in surprise as he watched the machine be disassembled right in his hand. Shit, so much for keeping the evidence. When his eye projected out a hologram onto the wall in front of them, replaying the same video. Huh, that's cool, Momo stated flatly. I wonder what else you can project, she wondered before remembering. Later, we can test it out later. We have bigger fish to fry. As she pulled up her contact list, we need a ride to the UA, as soon as possible. On the other end you could hear a voice responding, but not what they were saying. If it goes well then it's fine, sort of. If not, we'll come to you. Thanks, bye mom. The raven-haired teen looked at her boyfriend. Let's get ready to go, she said as she walked into the bedroom to change her clothes. The ones she was wearing were far too casual for this situation. You should change to your training gear, the non-tearaway kind. Izuku followed her into the bedroom, wait you're coming with. Momo turned as she changed shirts quickly, modesty be damned she had got into an intimidating suit and that took time that she didn't have to waste. Of course, no offense Zuku, but you're a puppy dog. Izuku puffed out his cheeks, no I'm not, I'm fierce. 
Yeah, if you're fighting, but against normal people, much less heroes, you're just, she walked over San's pants, her gray button up letting Izuku see her panties, she rubbed his cheek, adorable. Izuku tried to glare at her, but between her being flirty, him not doing a good job at keeping eye level with her, and that he knew she was right, the conversation wasn't going his way. Crossing his arms, he turned around to his dresser, and began changing his own clothes as well. Fine, he relented. Then began grumbling to himself, stupid cheating girlfriend, being sexy and cute when I'm trying to be tough. Momo wrapped her arms around her boyfriend and pecked him on the cheek. Oh someone is mad that he's too cuddly, she teased. You know cuddly boys get to cuddle cute girls when they're alone. Izuku blushed, well I guess I can be a little cuddly. Good, but we don't want cuddly Izuku today, she said as she leaned over and pulled up her black pants, Izuku watching as she bent, now we need fierce Mr. Midoriya, because I have the feeling this is not going to be easy for you. In a few minutes they were ready, when Momo's phone buzzed, which she pulled from the inside breast pocket, the most professional pocket. Good, the car is here, she said as she scrolled down the text. Also good, mom understood the urgency, she sent Takumi to drive for us. Izuku nodded, he liked Takumi, the best driver, the Yaoyoras' head, probably one of the best in the world. He used to be a street racer back in the day, so the rumors went. We even got the Phantom, Momo whistled. Izuku was stunned. Wow, da I mean, your dad let us use it. He had accidentally called Ringo and Nashi mom and dad once, and he was still living that down, they had decided since he was so comfortable and saw them as family he should just marry Momo then and there. Yeah, they must know how serious this is since they only left a few hours ago. Momo said as the pair walked out of the apartment, after locking up of course. Before they passed a small crowd that congregated to look at the luxury vehicle worth more than some houses. Ms. Yaoyorozu, Mr. Midoriya, Takumi said. He had an unassuming appearance, dressed in a white t-shirt and jeans. But when he got behind the wheel he was in his element. I have orders to bring you to the UA. Momo stepped into the vehicle first. That's correct, we need to be there by 5 o'clock. Izuku entered after her. Certainly, will I need to wait for you? Takumi asked after he closed the door and got into the driver's seat. Yes, things might get ugly. Momo admitted. As you wish. Takumi said as the 50 million yen car quickly and silently left the neighborhood. It was just after 4.30 when the intimidating black vehicle pulled up to the gate. Takumi exited the driver's seat and deliberately ignored the two-hero escort that was waiting for Izuku's arrival, with fluid motion he opened the door for his passengers, Izuku stepping out first. He was glad he had been educated on the proper manners of a vehicle, he would exit first and then take his woman's hand and help her out. It was a weird day when Ringo had taught him that. But now, it worked to his benefit because it gave him an air that he was above this entire situation. With Momo out of the vehicle, he slowly turned to stare down at the two heroes, Eraserhead and Vlad King, in solid black business suits. Looks like they came to intimidate too, Izuku thought to himself, wow am I glad I let Momo come with me now. With her standing next to him, they both provided the other with a resolve to stare unflinchingly at the two escorts. Well, she said. Let's get this over with. Vlad's eye twitched, the first sign that anything was happening, I distinctly remember it was supposed to be one brat, not two. And I distinctly remember that I was acting as his counsel, Momo shot back. Vlad King scoffed, and who are you that would be acting as his counsel? Eraser had looked at her, Momo Yaoyorozu. Momo looked at the other man, that is correct, I am Yaoyorozu. Vlad King grunted and turned his head away sharply, he knew the score. Yaoyorozu Industries is the leading manufacturer of hero support items in Japan and most of Asia, and not to give in to the princess, but it would do more harm than good to put UA against YI over something so small. Very well, it doesn't matter to me, as Awanumli said. Follow us, do not deviate from this path, do not go anywhere you have not been directed to go, do not ask questions. Izuku nodded as he and his girlfriend followed the two heroes, one annoyed and the other tired. It seemed like a long walk before they reached a gymnasium where quite a few people were waiting. Um, interesting, Nedzu said. I'm certain the invitation was only for Mr. Midoriya and not his mouse dog bear man, trailed off. In this capacity, I will be acting as his counsel, Momo finished for him. Nedzu shook his head and tutted, such a shame that we have to start so many potential students off so adversely. But I guess this is also a unique situation. The principal walked over to the two teens. Well if this gets over as quickly as possible, then it should be much easier to forget this entire incident, Momo fired back. The white animal in a suit nodded, quite, so let's get the business done so that we may move on to pleasure. Nedzu turned towards Izuku. Now I am sure you are more than a little miffed about finding out you did so well, second on the written, and first on the practical. But then being denied due to your, how you say, the principal paused as he tried to find the right words. Izuku, unfazed by the notion, spoke up. 
You can say it, I'm quirkless, and I passed. I wasn't supposed to, but I did. Now you need to either find a way to make me quit or I need to pass another test. Nedzu sighed, yes, unfortunately that is the brutal reality of the situation. UA's charter requires that all Hero Core students have a quirk, and since you do not have one, then you would not normally be allowed in. But the problem we have is that you did exceptionally well. If you didn't we could just not admit you, but you are different. The rodent continued his monologue. So in the spirit of fairness we will allow you a chance, we the faculty, have agreed that, if you can meet one of the teachers in combat, then we can safely enter you into the hero course, and I will bear the brunt of the backlash, when eventually your condition becomes known. Nedzu said as the three walked over to the teachers. So the only things standing in the way of my dream to be a hero, Izuku said aloud, are the heroes themselves. I'm certain that's someone's definition of irony. Yes, this is peculiar, Nedzu said as he motioned to his employees. Now you will be given a choice of who you wish to do bad. All Might, Izuku cut off the principal. Eh, uh, well I wasn't expecting you to be so ready nor to choose. Nedzu tried to comment. I choose All Might, this tactic won't work on me. Izuku interrupted the principal again. Tactic, I don't know what you could possibly mean by that, Nedzu chuckled. Izuku took a deep breath of air, time to put my muttering to use. Izuku opened his mouth, despite that no notice has been given, that All Might not only personally delivered my letter, was in the video explaining the situation to me, he is also here among your other teachers. It's obvious to anyone that he will also be a faculty member. Secondly, his purpose here is not for me to choose him, it's to intimidate me into choosing whichever hero I think is the weakest. Because as the number one, with an unknown quirk, the extent of physical capabilities are unknown, which for most people is a deterrent. Furthermore, it's obvious that the practical exam was watched by members of the faculty as the point system would require someone to tally the numbers at the end, especially the hero points which I can deduce, are only given for actions that help other participants. Taking another breath in, from that I can gather that each of them have some strategy going forward to fight me into submission, in an effort to dissuade me from attending this academy. But you made some mistakes, Izuku plainly stated. Nedzu, not betraying how amazed that in such a short time his little ruse was figured out, didn't so much as flinch as he listened to the teenager, but he did notice that his faculty was slightly unnerved by it. Tell me what these mistakes might be. Number one, you assumed I wouldn't know many details about the heroes employed by UA, so it was expected that I would blindly choose and hope I got someone I could beat. Izuku began passing his gaze over all the teachers. Ice back, heel, black hole, dog, erasure, voice, cement, somnambulist, homing, clones, iron claws, blood control. Izuku listed off their quirks. I know about their quirks, I have notes back home filled with information about their quirks, parameters, details, uses, past, and potential. The hero's fighting style and career. Izuku noticed a few of the teachers chuckling, to Izuku this meant he wasn't being taken seriously, that his hobby was nothing more than childish speculation. With a glance at Momo, she just nodded, a confirmation to do his attack thing, which normally creeped people out when he got all observant about people's quirks. Namuri Kayama, age 31, despite public appearances her work as a teacher and pro, means she hasn't had a date in the last 13 months, he said as he watched a female teacher fume, a few members of the faculty chuckled either at her or the fact that the punk they had to fight was backing up his claim. Shota Zawa, underground hero, best friend is Hisashi Yamada, they go for drinks every third Friday after his radio show, also the person who gave him his hero name. Has three cats. Now Izuku watched as the other heroes glared, he demonstrated that he even knew some of their schedule, even on one as reclusive as Eraserhead. I can go on about all of you, if you want, Izuku taunted. Nedzu, now worry about the very intelligent teenager, waved his hand. No that's quite alright, do you have a reason you chose All Might then? since you say it was to intimidate you. Fine, if I was to choose the easiest person to fight, it would be Eraserhead, my status as quirkless would mean that his own is useless in this fight, as there would be no quirk to erase, meaning it becomes a battle of our skills, and nothing else, but if you truly believed me to be quirkless. The letter you sent would have been a flat-out rejection, citing the school charter, something I wouldn't have been able to get anyone to overrule, because I am quirkless. Which would mean at least you, principal, believe me to be lying about my quirk status, and he would nullify it during the fight in an attempt to trip me up and make me lose, then after he tied me with his scars I would be made to confess my quirk to you. How on track am I? Nedzu nodded, so far, very. Now about All Might. Easy, I know more about him than I do any other hero in this room. Izuku stated to the principal, this time getting a very telling reaction from him and the rest of the heroes. Mr. Midoriya, that is actually a very frightening notion, Nedzu stated. One that before I can let you fight anyone, I will need you to explain more about. 
Izuku looked over to Momo once more, he had only hypothesized some of this with her at one time, but she did say his arguments were sound, even though seemingly untestable. His demeanor asking for confirmation that he should try them now. She looked at the room and saw the other tense heroes looking between the two of them, a ship that you are already partially in, she nodded to him. I've tracked his career ever since his debut, as did many people. Izuku stated, but he is inconsistent, he never answers direct questions about his quirk, which led me to believe he had a hidden past, because someone like him, coming out of nowhere, with power like his, it's unheard of. He watched All Might for any reactions to this information. So, I dug deep, his time in America with Professor David Shield, having access to other top scientists, seeing some of his notes and research I was able to piece together certain traits. He watched as All Might began to sweat, meaning he was on the right track, so he pressed further, his time at UA. Was shrouded in missing reports, blank documents, and a surprising lack of information on his quirk, which for other graduating students is typically registered in support company databases, which to my shock was lacking. Nedzu suddenly realizes a key flaw in their society security, if any support agency was taken over, heroes would be at a severe disadvantage against whomever had that information. I would like to discuss a matter with Yao Yorozu Industries, as soon as possible, if that is alright, he quietly said to Momo, who he had moved closer to while Izuku was ranting. Momo nodded, yes I believe I can understand why. Izuku, ignorant of their conversation, continued. So I tracked down information on his past teachers, no one had much to say really, excellent student, very bright future, proud to have taught him, except for one, a retired pro hero called Gran Torino. All Might tugged at his collar as Izuku kept speaking, yes, Sorohiko didn't have many kind words, he never calls, bit of a meathead, taught the lug everything he knew, even if I had to beat it into him. Sounds pretty accurate. The giant hero solemnly nodded, knowing that at some point he would need to call his old teacher. Izuku's next part shocked him and set him on edge though, however even he couldn't or maybe wouldn't speak about the woman I found in the photos. All Might was now worried, this kid supposedly without a quirk, knew too much about his history, leaving him wondering what was really going on. That was a dead end, but then I began to notice a pattern with you in the last few years. Before, All Might was active, any time of day, could be anywhere, it seemed like he was just being a hero whenever he was awake. Until almost six years ago, Izuku paced back and forth. This took me a long time to figure out, charts, graphs, maps, string, and pushpins. Then it all came together, you're getting weaker, Izuku pointed at the hero. Something made you disappear for a while, then when you came back, you've been steadily less present. However each time you are, you make sure you're more noticed. Instead of cleaning up crime in one area, you spread yourself around to make it seem like you haven't changed. All the teachers in the time that Izuku has been speaking have been preparing themselves. This was just supposed to be a little fact-finding, get information about this kid's quirk, then let him in with a warning. But now they are with a kid who knew too much, which unnerved them. It's a good tactic, and maybe no one but me has noticed, but I did some rough calculations, you're only active for maybe 3, 4 hours a day now. The tactical training with Dr. Hijimshikina is really paying off right now. Izuku thought to himself. One of the training that the mad doctor did with Izuku was once he regained portions of his memory, and along with it some of the hero information, the doctor made sure that lessons catered to quirks and heroes were regular, breaking them down to study. Izuku, if you want to be a hero, you need to know heroes and quirks for a multitude of reasons. One you need to know who is on your side, what they can do, and more importantly what they can't do. Doesn't mean you need to memorize it or anything, but if you think someone like Endeavor will help you put out a fire, then you might have a problem. The doctor said as he paced around Izuku. Plus with how much information is available on them, we can even cater training to work with their abilities and tactics. Izuku wondered for a moment, but doesn't that seem like I'm preparing to fight heroes? Wobbling his hand in the air, sort of, but most villains are caught on their first crime, so even though their quirk gets registered their full extent is usually unknown, as are their tactics and such, which doesn't really leave much to do but make guesses about them. But heroes, hehe, <laughs> the doctor turned to a monitor and turned it on before seeing hawks fly by on the screen. We get them in HD. So, for months Izuku's training revolved around actual pro tactics and abilities, which weirdly enough was profitable for not just him but the company and even the pros themselves. Izuku would get more proficient, the doctor would build machines that mimicked quirks for him to test against. Which led to the company being able to sell items that could be used by pros, even some commercial items. Lastly if during the training they developed a very effective strategy or usage, then why I would pass that information on to the hero or their agency, for a consulting fee of course, which Izuku would get a cut of, giving him a fair amount of spending cash. But back in real time, Izuku was coming to his conclusion. 
Looking over your career at the time, the only known villain that would come close to you in supposed power would have been Toxic Chainsaw, but that seems unlikely. So again, history is shrouded in mystery. Izuku slumped his shoulders, but I guess none of that's really true. He sniffled and rubbed his nose before beaming a smile at the pro. I was a huge fan of yours before the accident, and I guess, even though it's a bit different now, I just really want to meet you, even if it is for a fight. Before he fell into a fit of giggles. Sorry for getting you so worked up all might, Izuku wiped a tear from his eye. You're just, you, the number one, the hero I always looked up to, who made me believe I could be a hero. So, I don't know, in a messed up way this is like a dream come true. The tension in the room deflated slowly, Nedzu looked at the young heiress, when she quietly asked, so how much of that was actually right? Nedzu slowly nodded, far more than it had any right to be. His thoughts however were wild, even if we don't accept him into the hero course, I will find a way to keep him at this school. Izuku stretched himself, anyway, is that satisfactory to you principal? Am I allowed to fight, sorry spar, with all might now? Nedzu shook his head, yes, I believe that will be more than enough. This has been very enlightening for us all. All Might, if you will, the diminutive principal gestured to his newest employee. Now young man, I am going to offer you a chance to change, it can be anyone you want, doesn't have to be All Might. Thanks for watching this video. Part 2 is over. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. And also check out the playlist that I have created and enjoy. Link is in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.